This is perhaps one of the biggest narratives that we have seen in the last few months with crypto. I'm talking explosive gains. I'm talking trillions upon trillions of dollars entering this space and potentially seeing something similar to what we saw with Coinbase listings back in 2021. What I mean is China, Hong Kong is entering the crypto space. Now battling BlackRock for the first ones to issue a spot Bitcoin ETF as the second largest economy in the world and exposing altcoins for the first time in Hong Kong to retail traders. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. We've got to do a better job of getting across that America is free. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, Freedom of enterprise and freedom is special and rare. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Beyond the Headlines. I'm your host, Joshua Jake. And today I have to once again apologize for the audio and the lack of camera quality. Luckily, we are on the iPhone, so it's not too bad to visually watch, but I am actually setting up our new studio here at Discover Crypto. If you guys didn't see, I'm also actually just joining their team as the host for the new network, replacing their old host. So today though, I wanna jump straight into this topic at the end of this video. You know, if you guys stick around, I'll show you a little bit tour of the place. Uh, it is really, really late here, so most lights are turned off, but I'll show you some really cool things like the studio setup, but we need to talk about this Bitcoin spot ETF in Hong Kong. So the first thing I believe everybody should know about China is that they're in a very, very weird place. Since 1994, with their tax reforms, they have been a, an economy that has been really just reliant on something known as a local government financial vehicle. Essentially, this was a way for the central government to absorb more control over the liquidity of the markets. And when local governments needed help, the central bank would just chime in and give them funding. They would give them a loan out so to speak, to pay for anything that they would need for infrastructure. Now, this ultimately led up to the 30 years or last three decades of explosive growth in the economy. This is what ultimately led up to BRI, B -R -I, Brazil, Russia, and India, the term that was coined by the Goldman Sachs economist back in 2001, which now has ultimately evolved into the BRICS nations with the uh, alternative currencies like the BRICS narrative that is now approaching the scene and talking about the de-dollarization of the U.S dollar. But the point of this and the perspective of this and why this is so important, this is a massive indicator, perhaps one of the biggest indications that retailers in China are now actually being listened to for the first time. You see, the policies that Xi Jinping and the previous premiers have been implementing on these residents, on these families, the one children policies, telling them to you know pretty much rebundle and just buy more and more real estate, buy a fourth property, buy a fifth property. It has resulted in a very, very weak and fragile ecosystem. A lot of these ghost cities, they are actually at their zero capacity and they're now being forced demolished by the government itself to hopefully increase the value of properties around in other counties and states, etc. Now we don't need to get into the dirty details, but the overall analogy here is imagine if you had a buddy continuously lending you money because he had a really good job, right? He, this, this guy was the early investor into Apple. He had all of this Apple stock and he's been selling the Apple stock off for years, all right? The last three decades to be specific. However, as we approach a recession and we are in a high interest rate economy and we've seen $9 trillion printed over the last you know, three years, he has had to sell off the last of his stocks which means you're no longer gonna be receiving money from your buddy. That is what's happening with these local government financial vehicles. And they are trillions upon trillions of dollars in debt. I'm talking like 8 trillion US dollars. You've seen Evergrande, Country Garden, and a lot of these real estate firms start to default on their own loans. And this is just the beginning. The government, the central government, now needs to come in and inject stimulus into that economy or else it is going to collapse and be 30 times worse than what took place in 2008. And this is where it gets bullish for crypto. Right now in Hong Kong, there is an initiative pushing for the approval of a spot Bitcoin ETF. There is very limited exchanges available to these Asian markets that retailers can actually be a part of, and they're generally limited to Ethereum and Bitcoin specifically. So this announcement and this advocation for a new financial instrument that allows retailers to hedge themselves against an ever failing currency or collapse in the real estate sector or a collapse in the, obviously the US dollar, you need to start 
start paying attention to cryptocurrencies and altcoins that are Chinese based, whether it's Conflux or Filecoin and the list that I'll just show you in a second, because if they get this regulatory framework in actually Hong Kong, there is going to be a first altcoin that gets listed onto an exchange that's going to have access to not just millions of retailers looking to hedge themselves against a collapsing economy, but it's going to open these altcoins up to billions of dollars in investments. So the first project that we're going to look at today is a project that I am not really that familiar with. I'm not sponsored by them. I have no connections. I don't hold any, but I've known about them for some time. Conflicts is a project that's not only been leading the leaderboards for you know the last year at this point, but they have emerged as the most promising Chinese blockchain technology. This is a project that is considered to be China's Ethereum, even though Ethereum is fundamentally funded completely by the CCP, but that's for another video. Conflux project's roots are firmly planted in China, conceived by a renowned group of Chinese blockchain visionaries, including Turkey award winner Andrew Yao, and it has secured substantial endorsement and funding from the Shanghai government itself, making it as an innovated blockchain platform of key importance. So there you have it. I mean, this is going to be the Chinese dominant blockchain ecosystem on the markets right now. Now, of course, guys, do your own research. And the point of this is that I'm going to be letting you know I have a watch list, which you can find on my Twitter and hopefully in the link in the description below. But ultimately, you're going to want to start paying attention to these Chinese based systems Systems that could potentially be an access to retail traders now. Now, number two is going to be one that you've probably heard of. NEO a layer one blockchain developed in 2014. Now this is a project that can be attributed to China by several factors. Primarily it's Chinese origins and the backing it has received from the nation's government, particularly through the blockchain services network BSN. BSN's endorsement of smart contract technology is a pivotal component of the country's infrastructural evolution and has significantly elevated NEO's profile in China. This is a project closely connected with the business environment. Now number three, another project Project I guarantee a lot of you are familiar with, VeChain. Now, VeChain at this point, I think, has built a very successful brand around itself, partnering with Walmart, BMW, and even though having this proof of authority mechanism and consensus behind it, it went from like a penny of a penny of a penny in 2021 and ran all the way up to 23 cents. And in fact, it might have passed that. Now, VeChain was a project that I was very early in on. I actually got my parents in on it, and that is actually what made my parents really open their eyes about crypto when they realized, oh, holy smoke. We just 50x this crypto in the middle of a bull run within six months. Now, I don't necessarily know VeChain is going to be able to do that again, but as the supply chains are probably one of the most important utilities of blockchain as we progress towards a world of deglobalization and focus more on a regionalistic based economy. Now, again, I don't actually own any of these projects right now, but these are going to be those Chinese based tokens that you really want to pay attention to. Now, VeChain specifically has a lot of engagements with the Chinese government government. They created a blockchain-based carbon credit trading platform pilot in Guan New Area. I'm probably saying that wrong. But they have been recognized as a national high-tech enterprise by China's National Internet Information Office and has deep ties with local companies such as China Tobacco, which is a state-owned titan. So pay attention to VeChain. Now, as for exchanges, I am not the biggest fan of these Asian exchanges. The one I'm going to be talking about is Huobi. Now, I'm not going to do necessarily a breakdown on Huobi. I don't trust Justin Sun one bit, not with an ounce of blood in my body. This is someone who launched Tron and just immediately dumped on his investors because he was never here to help develop and bridge a gap between Web 2 or Web 3. He saw money, he got greedy, and he dumped and pumped and pumped and dumped. But hey, this is going to be one of the largest exchanges, if not the largest exchange in the Asian market, right behind Binance. Now, lastly, is going to be a project you may not actually expect. Filecoin. Filecoin is a decentralized storage platform. It provides develop as a robust platform to integrate Filecoin storage into applications and workflows, ensuring secure on-chain data storage and is needed pretty much for the scalability of any ecosystem, especially Ethereum. Now, Filecoin has attracted substantial investment from Chinese entities like Sequoia China and Fabushi Capital. Its network is a bedrock for several Chinese blockchain startups such as IPFSN Main, which caters to China's market 
needs for decentralized data storage and transmission. Again, we're looking for those key players that potentially could get that first regulatory approval to access a retail market in Hong Kong that no one's ever been able to be a part of. But either way, guys, again, I don't own any of these products, but I will be listing a watch list in the comments below that is a Chinese-based watch list where I went through and just kind of scoured through CoinMarketCap and CoinGecko and looked through just the internet and found the most relatable currencies to Hong Kong's market specifically. This is an emerging market that you need to be aware of. So start researching and stay ahead of the curve. But that's really all I got for you guys today. I've been walking around this same room all night. It is already like 8 or 9 p.m. I don't even know what time it is here. And, you know, we got to kind of shut down the facility here. This is going to be our merch room. This is a giant facility. So if you guys would like to see kind of a walkthrough on this or a breakdown of the studio, you know, just let me know in the comments or go ahead and give us a follow over on TikTok or my new YouTube channel as well. And of course, guys, I am George. We are all George. And we're going to continue to keep giving you guys the best information going beyond the headlines and giving you guys the truth to this industry so we can stay ahead of that curve for this next boring guys thank you for watching my name is joshua jake and i'll see you guys in the next video